Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and today's video is about corrections and making some proper amends. Now ladies and gentlemen, uh, Lewis Rossman is a creator that I absolutely respect, and uh, he came into a mention of a video I made a few days ago regarding Lightway Festival. Now while I stand by that video, I definitely can agree that I made some mistakes, and I want to correct them for, you know, anybody involved. Now there are two <coughs> corrections I want to do. Uh, I basically had my own beliefs come out in that video where I basically uh, looked into the definition of selling out and I kind of uh, compared the idea that, hey, if you look at the panels for that and you look at the mission statements of the organization mentioned called FUTO, it might seem like money, money had gotten exchanged for promotion of, you know, common, you know, beliefs, right? Right to repair. A lot of those, uh, you know, uh, open source beliefs, a lot of those, you know, common beliefs that even I share. Now, of course, I'm not here to uh, insinuate that even happened. That was just me looking at it from my belief point. Uh, no money really got traded, factually. I don't state these things as fact until I have them. But of course, for another uh, person, Lewis Rossman, who actually runs a nonprofit that I absolutely respect, uh, had made a comment on that video. And he actually made a comment on his own community channel, where he did actually mention a few things about his nonprofit. Now, I made one mistake in that video that I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely own up to, and that is not reaching out to Lewis Rossman by email. Now, of course, that video was just something lighthearted for me that I was just covering, because at the end of the day, there were no stakes. Nobody got scammed. It was just a simple festival with some mismanagement. Now, of course, when it comes to Lewis Rossman in this case, when it comes to, you know, his 501c charity, I made the claim, basically, I would say, that uh, he basically got paid a million bucks to show up at this convention. Now, I looked at a YouTube comment he publicly made off of his channel, and that's pretty much where I left it at. To be honest, Lewis Rossman wasn't a massive part of the video, so I really had treated it as an afterthought, and I didn't reach out to him when I probably should have with the email, and I 100% owned that. Now, there was some problem with that video where I feel like it kind of led his character into question, and the more I look into it, you know, Lewis Rossman has had to deal with this for, I would say, years. Just this year alone, he had to talk about is he embezzling money from his nonprofit, which is an incredibly stupid, uh, you know, assumption that anybody can make. Nonprofit organizations in the United States are subject to a lot of laws, and they basically want you to account for every single dollar that you've ever spent as part of your nonprofit. Now, of course, for Lewis Rossman, any time that I ever step on toes like that or I ever really give the wrong impression, I want to do, I want to make things right. Now, of course, that's an apology for Lewis Rossman. Should have definitely reached out to you via email. Now, of course, when it comes to right to repair, I feel like this video is a great video to just explain to you why I believe in these causes. And it's not just Lewis Rossman as a person, it's the cause behind it. Now, as you know, on this channel, I cover a lot of Linux related content, a lot of content regarding open source technologies, but right to repair is something I don't really talk about all that much. But for me, and I don't like to get political on this channel, but for me politically, right to repair is an incredibly important thing. Now, Lewis Rossman's nonprofit group to begin with is a repair preservation group. And for repair preservation group, you can go to their website, fighttorepair.org, one that I will absolutely leave in the comment section pinned just for ease of access. Now, there's two donation links, one which takes you to a GoFundMe that is currently at 777,000 US dollars, but I use the donation link up over here. Now, to make things right and to basically tell everyone that I actually do believe in organizations like this to basically dispel any possible rumor I could have started that made it look like this possible nonprofit wasn't legitimate, I donated $10,000 of my own money to this scenario. Now, of course, uh, I sent it money. I sent that money via credit card. So currently it is actually uh, posted to go. Uh, actually not posted. What is it like? A what, is it posted? Yeah, it's the one that it's the one that's uh, in, in the middle of processing. Now, of course, I'm going to monitor this in the in the next few days to make sure it actually goes through. And I'll post uh, receipts as I can on Twitter, simply because uh, sending money across the country, uh, across international lines is oftentimes, uh, you know, questionable. OK, sometimes Canada approves it, sometimes they don't. But of course, I decided to put $10,000 of my own money down into this because I believe in causes like this. Right to repair is an important situation an important cause that anybody should get behind because it benefits all of you. Have you ever bought an iPhone or a Samsung device or a Google phone or really any product that uh, oftentimes has some, you know, pretty proprietary components tossed into it? Well, have they ever broken on you? Probably yes. And you've probably tried to book an appointment with any of their service centers. Now, of course, sometimes these service costs can be astronomically higher. But as an engineer, I know that the cost is sometimes very minimal. You can buy these things off of third-party supply chains and usually be able to fix things like busted batteries, busted screens,
screens, you get the idea. But of course, there are companies that are designing products that are uh, basically, uh, I, I would say in, in a sense, designed to be planned obsolescence. You know, what I mean? you know what I mean? Like they're designed so that once they break, you basically go in and buy a new product. Now, of course, it doesn't just extend to cell phones. It could be computers. It could be laptops. It could be even things like, uh, you know, national defense equipment, equipment used to protect you. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, dirty defense contractors go out of their way to upcharge the military, the government, because they know they can can at the expense of your safety medical equipment who fucking cares if you're dying we're not going to let you fix the product unless uh you pay us a hefty sum forget about the livelihoods of other people or their living fuck that shit we're trying to make some bank truly it's a disgusting world that we live in and right to repair tries to combat any of it ever bought an electric car you know they're expensive and you know they get really fucking expensive when key components inside them break yeah muda there's not a lot of maintenance in an electric car yeah well, Wait until the motor fucks up. Wait until the battery faces some issues. At that point, you know, because of how some of these electric manufacturers are, 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 are have existed in today's day and age, uh, Tesla, for instance, I'm not even going to cough on that one, you can often get hit with pretty sizable repair bills, even though the actual cost to repair may not be as high as old Elon is charging. But of course, right to repair is an incredibly important aspect to me. And while there have been great strides in the European Union, the United States, Canada to make it better, it's still not perfect. And of course, nonprofits like these are the only way that you can ever affect any form of policy at your state level, at your town level, fuck, maybe even your federal level. And this is definitely one correction I wanted to make because for me, right to repair is as important as open source technology, open hardware standards, Linux as a kernel overseeing Windows at some point, even though that'll probably never happen. But for me, the fight to open source and freedom on your technical products and you as a person is a fight that I absolutely will die for. 100%. And that's a correction that I wanted to make. So ladies and gentlemen, it's a little late. I wanted to make this correction and I wanted to make things right and basically tell you I believe in these projects. I didn't want to give any form of insinuation like that and I definitely don't want to make Lewis Rossman look like a bad guy or a sellout or something of that nature. I honestly did not think that video was going to be taken as seriously in that regard, but re-watching it again, I realized I made a mistake. So to Lewis, I'm sorry I didn't contact you at all during the making of this video. I could have emailed you. I absolutely could have, and I own that. And if I ever, ever led the cost to insinuate that your group was somehow malicious or shady, that you had to answer for that, I truly do apologize for that as well. And for that, I myself have put my money on the line too, which might as well be an endorsement for your project as well. So ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar. And yeah, that's all I wanted to say. I'm out.